Okay, hello everyone, that's Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and yes, I'm back, and I'm actually back this time. This isn't a pre-recording from like 14 years ago. I'm actually recording this uh, reasonably close to when I'm going to be uploading it, which is exciting, because I haven't done that in a while. I haven't recorded in like an entire month, basically. Um, but damn, did this game not waste any time in reminding me why I really starting to not enjoy playing it. Damn, it was just like, oh, remember this problem that you really didn't like about the game? Well, you made it worse, so I hope you enjoy. But anyways, this is a video about Tetsu Tetsu. I think I'll make a different video uh, talking about the state of the game. Because, damn, do I have a lot to say about that. But anyways, let's just get into Tetsu Tetsu. So his regular attack string is kind of garbage. Like, it doesn't help him at all, but like, you know, it's three hits, sure. The air attack string is a lot better. It is a lot faster as well, or maybe it's not faster. Actually, no, it definitely is. It feels a lot faster because this ground punch is like the slowest thing I've ever seen. But his air attack string is actually pretty good and it puts the opponent in a bounce state so you can combo off of it pretty easily and do stuff like this. And you'll be doing this pretty often. Um, just a quick note on his attack string because it's one of the things I really dislike about the character is that it's like one of the slowest recovering things I've ever seen. So you can never just press a button with Tetsu Tetsu. Um, like in the neutral without expecting to be punished because the opponent like decides to sidestep which they do because Attacks are so slow the opponent will sidestep and like I'm holding the block button I have to wait like a whole second before I can actually block like ready one Mississippi Oop. Even longer than that even like after he does a hit one Mississippi and then I can block I have to wait an entire second after he does the attack before I can block why? What's the point of having a regular like basic attack if I can't throw it out? Like, if I can't use it in the neutral, it's so awful because he just gets punished all the time. So basically, you're never going to use your attack string unless you're trying to punish someone. And uh, so yeah, that's a real good start to a character. <laughs> uh, his red attack is this red attack. It's pretty okay. You can use it in combos and it puts you in the air and you can combo off of it. So that's always good. And that's really all you can ask for for a red attack. It's nothing crazy or stupid that tracks ridiculously. But honestly, I appreciate that. I don't like those. So... Um, his air yellow attack is this interesting, like, bounce attack. Um, it doesn't have as good tracking as it would seem. Like, if the opponent sidesteps, he completely goes in, like, the opposite direction. But it's pretty good because he can, do, um, do all of his quirk buttons off of it, like his tilt quirk 1 and stuff. Um, but he can also do his grounded quirk 2, which is something we'll get into later, which is really useful because it is actually a floor splat, so you can use it after your combos like this. And then do your yellow attack, and then go into this floor splat to extend your combos, which is a really handy tool. But keep in mind, it does Meteor Blow really quickly, just like that, if you use it more than once, or after a long combo. So, yeah, it has a lot of Meteor effect, but it's really useful, so you're going to be using it anyways. His ground yellow attack, I don't know, it's kind of just a yellow attack, does a decent chunk of damage, nothing crazy, but also nothing really useful. His quirk one is... Mm, I have a love-hate relationship with it. Actually, mostly hate, but there's a little bit of fun. So, it's kind of like an advancing yellow move, because when he goes into the metal state, he's completely invulnerable. I don't believe he even takes any damage if he blocks something during it. Here, I can quickly test that. But basically, when he goes into the metal state, he's not going to be taking any damage. Um, I don't think he even hit me. Yeah, so I don't take any damage, and you armor through whatever they do and hit them. So, it seems pretty good, and if it was just that, it is really good. You know, it's obviously punishable on block. One of the big problems is, its tracking is kind of garbage. And also, sometimes it's punishable on hit. So if I put the opponent onto doing their, um, work one, and I go near the wall, if you do it, like, kind of close to a wall or a corner or something, you can get punished for hitting your opponent with this move. So, he's trying to block here, or actually he wasn't trying to block. But you can set it up so he's blocking instantly after it. And basically, if you're near a wall and you hit this move, the opponent can, like, get up and recover and punish you because it has such long recovery. Like, before you can actually block, which is really stupid. And it kind of spoils the move for me. Um, also, like, you can never, like, you can dash cancel it, but it's almost impossible to actually get, like, a combo off of it because they just fall, like, instantly. Uh, unless maybe if you're in the air and you do the air version. Like, then you might have a chance, but it still, like, never happens. So, yeah, it's a cool move that you can throw out, like, as an advancing move just to, like, hit the opponent if they're trying to, like, mash a lot of buttons. You can armor through whatever. But, uh, yeah, 
<laughs> also, it's not very good at doing that. If I put Ilona onto doing their, like, Jiro... Oops, that was too fast. He doesn't really keep going forward if he runs through something. So if you're trying to get through a projectile, um, sometimes when he's doing the advance, he doesn't really go... Like, he, yeah, he just gets pushed back and stops in place, which makes him super punishable. Because, yeah, like, if it's not as he goes forwards, and, like, he's... Oh, wait. It's like, I press the button, then I hit a projectile. A lot of time... Okay, I'm not demonstrating very well. But a lot of the time, it's like we saw before, where, he, yeah, he just stops like that, and then you get, like, punished every time. So... It's cool in theory, but if you end up using it too much, like, you're gonna get punished because it'll screw up somehow. But I like using it still because it's fun. Uh, and it's the same in the air. And you can use it after his tilt quack one in order to end some combos. Um, in the air version, I mean. For a little bit extra damage there. Okay. So, now his tilt quack one is an interesting move where it like changes its hit reaction depending on how many times you press the button if you just do it once he'll just do this four hit string that's the most damaging version if you press it an extra time he'll do a knee which does a little bit less damage but puts him in the air and if you press it three times oh no and you have to press the third time like after he does the knee you can just mash it if you want he actually puts him into the wall splat so it's kind of like he does the um quirk two after the end of it which is really handy, because you can do stuff like this. Uh, oops, time that a bit better. So you can meticulously extend your combos with this, and get something simple going like this. Which is pretty decent damage. And in the air, the same thing kind of goes. It has three different versions. The regular one, the with an extra button, where he just does like that, and when you press it three times, he will do the quirk one afterwards. Um, I don't really use the like three hit one at the end, it is the most damaging, but like it doesn't really get you much, especially considering he has like one of the best resets in the game if you just do the second part of it. So if I do it, wait, he's on recovery, right? So if I have done like a few hits into this, like and then ending my combo in this, this like almost never meteor blows, but it's really handy because you can you recover before the opponent does, so when they recover, they're left very close to you, so you can get really easy recovery resets off of it if you don't time it poorly like I just did. Like, that wasn't even perfect timing there. You can basically hit them, like, as soon as they recover, which is really awesome. And is really scary, because people fall for it all the time. Oh, that was a little bit too fast, but if I was just a tiny bit slower there, it would have been, like, the perfect timing. Yeah, that was pretty close there. And you can just keep looping this, because you stay in the air. So that was slightly slow. But if you get the timing down, it's almost unavoidable. Unless you do a, um... Unless your opponent does a just guard, but... Come on. People that know how to just guard are very rare. Like, you can't even fit a yellow attack in there. I've, like, tested it with the, um, CPU. You can't fit a counter attack in there. You can't fit a sidestep. So unless they know how to just guard, that's basically an infinite. Um... If you time it correctly, which is kind of hard to do sometimes. But, like, a lot of the time the opponent isn't super ready to avoid your, like, like instant recovery reset. Because it does look like you're going to continue the combo, so a lot of the time people will accidentally recover, and then not know what they're doing, and then just get hit by a follow-up. That was really slow there. But you can do it very well timing, but I'm just not doing it very well timed because I'm recording and I can never do anything when I record. That was a bit better. But, yeah, you can see the point. It's a really good reset tool. And basically every time you do a combo with Tetsu Tetsu, Tetsu Tetsu, um, you're going to be ending with a reset, so one of your options is using this. So you're going to be ending your combos like this a lot, because his combos don't do a lot of damage, but if you do resets, you're going to get a ton of damage. But we'll get more into resets a little bit later. So, that was his Tilt Quirk 1. Now for his Quirk 2. Um, in the air, he kind of leaps down and throws the opponent, and he throws them extremely far and extremely fast, so it's basically guaranteed to get a wall splat no matter where you are. As you saw, even when I'm on this side, it still gets a wall splat from, like, further away from the wall. So, obviously, that's just a really amazing wall splat tool. If, you know, you're partway through your combo and you've done something like this, and you're like, oh, I'm near a wall, I can just go whoop. Oh, not if you're that close. If you're a bit closer, you have to do it after, like, two hits. And then, you know, you can run up and start doing your combos.
But once again, he's not going to get really huge damage off of anything, so if you want to get damage, you're going to be going for resets. But it's cool that if you like see that you're facing a wall, you can be like, okay, I might get a little bit extra damage from this combo, because it's very re um, rarely like meteor blows. So you know you can just add a little bit extra damage to your combos or your reset things, and uh, yeah, use your wall spot, which is pretty handy. And the ground version is like an anti-air where he jumps up in the air. It's just this. Um, it doesn't hit grounded opponents. So I guess it could be used as an anti-air, but like you're never going to use it as an actual anti-air. But you use it in combos where the opponent's above you, and then yeah, it pops the opponent into the ground. Um, I just realized it had has FE on his, his ear things. It's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you can use this in your combos, like in spots like this. You can do basic combo like this. I would never do this combo because I always go for resets, but you can do stuff like this. To get pretty decent meterless damage, because he can get that very consistently, very easily. Like, it's impossible to drop that combo. So it's cool that he can like always get guaranteed like pretty okay damage. 8,500 is nothing, nothing awful. Um, but yeah, that's basically the use of that tool. And like we said before, you can use it after your... Um, Tilt, uh, your tilt attack in the air, or your counter attack in the air, to um, reset your combo from the air, which is really cool, because that means he can kind of confirm into a full combo from no matter what kind of hit. So if you have gone in and done your cool resets that I was talking to you about before, and I'll talk a little bit more about later, um, you can actually, when you get the reset part, you can actually go in for a full combo using the floor splat, and then go in for stuff like this. Um, but keep in mind, the opponent will need to blow very early. I think that's going to be, yeah. So you need to be really careful about how you combo after that. This Tilt Quirk 2 is an interesting charge attack that similarly, similarly to the Quirk 1 I have a love-hate relationship with. It's a really good idea, like how he charges through projectiles and stuff, but he can be hit from the back. So, you know, you'd think it would be a really good move for, like, getting in, because, you know, he's not a zoner, he doesn't have projectiles or anything, so he needs a way to get in against people that are trying to run away or throw projectiles and stuff. Um, and he also gets a combo from it. But, so in theory, it's really useful, but it never is. So if I put, um, him on to use his Jiro, and then the Jiro things are floating towards me. Oops, I missed. But what I'm trying to show is that- Oh my goodness, those come out so fast. <laughs> okay, I, I can do this. He gets stopped when he hits a projectile. And then he has like- It acts like- Like the opponent blocked it. So he just like awkwardly stands there. Like this. He can also cancel it by the way, but you would never do that because the recovery is so slow. So like you can cancel it by pressing the block button. And he doesn't actually do the hit. But yeah, when you hit a projectile, he goes into this, like, stop state, and then he just gets stopped in his tracks, and then has to do the full recovery. So you get punished every time someone throws a projectile, because they recover way faster than you. So if you're trying to get in on a projectile, and you're like, haha, you can't zone me, but then you get hit by a projectile. You don't actually get hit by it, but it stops you, and you get punished, and then... It's not fun, man. Um, it is also unsafe on block, which makes sense, but I kind of just wish it was actually good against, like, projectiles and getting in against zoners and stuff, because that's kind of the point, isn't it? But no. Um, you can also do it in the air, and this version's a bit better because it actually just goes straight towards the opponent, and I believe has tracking on it, which is pretty handy, and you can get a combo off of that version too, so usually if I do this, I like to do the air version, so I don't have to worry about doing, like, the dumb steering, because it can be kind of weird to steer. So, yeah, it's a pretty good move, but it has flaws that make it less good. But, uh, yeah, that's all of his base attacks. Um, yeah, I'll quickly talk about his plus ultra 1 and his plus ultra 2 before I get into combos and stuff. So, as you can see, doing his plus ultra 1, and it's the same for his plus ultra 2, he goes into his metal state. Um, quick note on his plus ultra 1, very little damage and always meteor blows, so don't bother using it to get huge damage in combos. But the best part about it is it puts him in this metal state, where he's basically invincible, but you can see my guard meter is going down slowly. And after a certain amount of time, I will turn back into regular Tetsu Tetsu. Um, yeah, now I'm back, but it takes quite a while. And, well, yeah, so while you're in the metal state, Literally nothing can touch you except unblockables that will break your armor. Um, so it's kind of like Kirishima, but unlike Kirishima, you don't take any damage. So you're completely invincible. 
Um, you just get slowed down slightly when things are hitting you, but you can just armor straight through them, which is really cool. But when you get hit, you do um, you do take extra damage to your guard meter. So when people hit you, your guard meter just goes down. Actually, no, it doesn't. Oh yeah, it takes like little chunks. So like bigger hits will do a little bit more. But it's really good because like even though he's hitting me, I can just go straight through and go in for my combos. Um, which is really cool. And he also gets a bit of a damage buff in this state, which is really handy. Uh, yeah. But, as you saw there, when my- when your guard meter gets too low and you're in- in the metal state, um, anything that hits you or anything that you block will break your guard, and then they get a full combo for doing that, so that can be a bit scary. And also, you're slowed down quite a bit when you're metal, um, which means that people just run away from you because they don't want to deal with your invincibleness and your increased damage. People just run away until, like, your guard meter runs out so that the, when they do one hit, you, like, instantly die. So, uh, that's not very fun, but a lot of the time people don't do that, and they're just like, what the hell, why are you omning through everything? And that's, like, one of the most satisfying times in the game. It only really happens against, like, noobs, but it's very fun, and it's very satisfying. Just to be able to armor through everything they do, and then just freak out and just keep mashing buttons, but you just go straight through them. Oh, that is satisfying stuff. But yeah, basically, being metal, it does change some of your hit things, like, you can't actually do the full string here, because it just splats your opponent. So you change your combo slightly, just to do the yellow attack a little bit, um... A little bit earlier in the combo. But you do actually get pretty decent damage in this state. I'll quickly show it before I like um, run out. So this is what a full combo will look like when you're in this version. And it'll be a bit more because... So 10,000 damage meaninglessly is nothing... Uh, nothing to cry about. It's pretty impressive. It's pretty good damage. That's what I'm trying to say. 10,000 damage when he's in the metal state is pretty awesome, considering you'll be getting combos a lot because people mash and you just go straight through them. You get an easy 10,000 damage combo. Pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, damage buff is handy, and it applies to basically all of his attacks. So, now that we've talked about all of his base stuff, we can actually talk about his combos and his resets and stuff, which is what people really like to hear, isn't it? So, with Tetsu Tetsu, his combos are pretty fun. He has a lot of different, um, like, um, ways he can do his combos, like he can change them up if he wants. But in general, they're not gonna do much damage. His combos themselves, if you're just doing a regular combo, is not really gonna hurt. So I'll show, like, a base BNB combo that you do, that, like, I've found does, like, uh, like nearly the most damage. Um, if I do something like this... Go for the red attack. Uh, oops, I didn't do all of it. So I'll annotate it this time. So two hits into Quirk 2. Red attack. Three hits into Tilt attack. And then mash Tilt Quirk 1. And you get about 8,500 damage. Which is pretty good damage for Metalus. And I showed it before. That's pretty decent damage. Um, he can get similar damage if you want to do it um, differently. And you want to use the Tilt Quirk 1. You can do the same thing. You just delay the Tilt Quirk 1 a little bit. So that you get all of the hits to hit. There we go. And then you can go in for basically the same thing, except you want to leave out the red attack, because it'll meet you blow a bit earlier. And that actually- oh, it actually does a little bit more damage, because I guess, you know, those extra hits and less scaling from stuff, but yeah. It's similar damage, you're not going to be getting huge damage from doing different stuff, but it's cool that he has different options. And of course combos like these um, can be varied to do if you get a hit in the air. So you can do something like this, and then you get onto the ground, so that you can get this extra splat. You go for something like this. And now you have to be careful and end your combo early. Or else you'll get an early Meteor Blow. 7,600 damage is pretty good. Maybe you can do something slightly better, but I haven't really found much that does more. Because he gets Meteor Blows really quickly. Like, I'll show you an example. Like, if I did the combo slightly differently, it would have been a Meteor Blow and I really wouldn't get that much damage. So if I added a Red Attack, and I tried to do, like, these things... That'll meet you blow there. Could have meet you blowed even earlier sometimes, but yeah. You can get pretty decent damage off of stuff, which is pretty fun, and it's good that you can like convert off of any hit, whether it's in the air or on the ground or a red attack. Which is something that not all characters have the pleasure of. 
So yeah, that's pretty cool. But what's really crazy about Tetsu Tetsu, and this is where I'm getting into the scary stuff, guys, that makes him completely broken. Um, not only does he have these resets that we talked about before, where if you do the Tilt Quirk, the second part of Tilt Quirk 1, it's almost an uh, inavoidable um, recovery reset if you do the right timing, because it leaves you so close and that's so much hit advantage. So that one was pretty tight there, but you can make it even tighter so there's literally nothing they can do. Um, I've tested it against the AI, and the, they can't fit in a counter-attack or anything in there, so it's literally like an unavoidable unless the opponent knows how to just guard. But like I said, barely anyone knows how to just guard, especially online. You can't fit in a counter-attack or a sidestep unless you know how to just guard, that's basically a guaranteed reset. Which means he's doing big damage, so as you saw that combo there did 7600, and that's from an aerial part of a combo. And if you do the initial part, you're adding it onto, you're adding 7,000 um, onto what, like, what oh, would be a little bit more than this. 7,000 onto 8,000. So, damn, like 15,000 damage combo for free just because you hit the opponent in a reset. That's pretty good. And there's nothing stopping you from, like, looping this part over and over again. And just keeping on going into the... Um, and if you time it correctly, you can just keep doing that over and over again and just getting tons of damage. And I have done that a lot of times online, actually. In, even in, like, because I've only been playing him today. In the games that I've played, basically everyone just keeps getting hit by that. And you can get a ton of damage. It is pretty dirty, that's why I don't like to do it too much, but I wanted to show you guys. But another reset that he has that uh, is even worse, but I really love that it's in the game, because I can complain about it now. Because um, it really highlights one of the biggest problems about the game, and that's the recovery system. So if I do something like this, the opponent- I mistimed it, damn it. <laughs> but basically, after he does any of these floor splat things, if I wait a bit of time until the opponent has to recover to get out of the ground. Oh my goodness. But then I do my aerial, um, tilt quirk 2. There's literally nothing the opponent can do. Oh, oh my goodness. There's nothing the opponent can do. Except dust guard maybe, but I don't think you can actually dust guard there because of how the recovery like works. So as you see there, as soon as the opponent is like a able to be hit, they get hit by my combo. So and I can just keep looping this over and over again. Okay, I did a little bit early there. It's pretty easy to time, um, but I'm recording, so I mess everything up. <laughs> so you just have to wait a little bit. And then like jump in the air and do this, and oh my goodness, if you do it too early then you'll completely miss, which is really annoying. And I'm doing that a lot now because I'm just so pent up because I'm recording. Okay, just wait a little bit longer. But as you see there, Tetsu Tetsu got hit the second that, um, the second that he recovered, like as the frame where he was able to be hit, he got hit, so there's nothing you can do. You can't fit in a counter attack, you can't fit in a sidestep or anything. And I don't believe he can just guard either, and even if they could, basically no one's going to just guard that, especially in the like the online Xbox environment. So you can just keep doing this over and over again, and damn, do I have footage of people just getting hit by this over and over again. You can just keep doing it, and no one knows what to do. And like, so as long as they don't have supports, you can just keep getting this infinite damage, and it's so dirty. And, but it like really shows what the problem with the game is. The recovery system is stupid and too flawed and basic. And yeah, Tetsu Tetsu really exploits it. But other than that, he's not really an overly strong character. So I guess he has something, but it like s s stuff really needs to be fixed. But I'm not going to get into that in this video. But anyways, that's the basics of Tetsu Tetsu. Um, there's nothing really too much to talk about. You know, he has pretty cool combos. He can convert off of anything. Unfortunately, he meteor blows very quickly, but he has really awesome resets to make up for it, where he can get like 15,000 damage for a single reset, but he can also keep repeating the reset over and over again until the opponent dies if they don't have supports. Which probably won't happen, but like, off of any hit, you can get like at least three repetitions, which like, leaves the opponent basically dead. So, pretty scary stuff. And, um, oh, just a quick note, if you want to come with your plus ultra one, you can do something like this. This is what I found does like nearly the uh, kind of the most damage. Oh, I did that wrong. He slipped away again. Oh, and now I'm in armor state, so it's actually going to do a little bit more damage. But uh, yeah, you can do it in both states. Oh my goodness! No. 
Don't screw everything up now, please. Okay, and then you do another two hits. Uh, what? Okay, you're supposed to do the last hit. Can we? God damn it! <laughs> do this into the tail quack one again. Okay, that should work. If I wasn't just a tiny bit late. Okay, cool. That does pretty decent damage. And it meteor blows, so you can run up and just start harassing your opponent because you're made of metal now and you can do anything. So, yeah, that is Tetsu Tetsu, guys. I'll show off his plus ultra too while I exit the video. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my breakdown. And honestly, I hope you enjoy playing with Tetsu Tetsu because I don't think people are really enjoying playing the game anymore. So, if you are, you're making it a better place. But, uh, anyways, thanks for watching through this video. Um, I'm repeating myself, aren't I? Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, see you in the next one. Go out and play some Tetsu Tetsu. Bye!